Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. In part one of our nesting and pre-composing tutorial, we learned how to nest our compositions and how to pre-compose our layers. Now in part two, let's talk about why you would do that. There are actually a lot of advantages to nesting and pre-composing, and here are a few. A major advantage is that by pre-composing, you have the ability to reuse the same animation over and over in many compositions or even many times within the same composition without the hassle of extra layers or copying and pasting. If you have a logo that comes up many times throughout an ad you're working on, having the entire animation pre-composed means you can just drop the pre-comp right into your main comp as many times as you need to and then size and position it for your purposes. Another advantage is that you can animate or affect many layers at once. That means that you can have the entire animation scale up together or add a transition such as CC light wipe to all of them at once. In some cases, to get certain effects to work at all, you may have to pre-compose a layer. For example, if you want a displacement map that you've created with the fractal noise effect to work properly, that fractal noise layer must be pre-composed before After Effects will recognize it as a valid displacement map. Also, if you have a layer matting another layer and you want to add a drop shadow to the final result, you can only do this if you apply the effect to a pre-composition of these two layers or it won't work properly. And that's because if you add it to the matte layer, the drop shadow will become part of the matte. And if you add it to the layer being matted, you will not see it because it's being matted out. Another advantage of nesting is that when you have a nested composition with animation and you need to change the timing, you can time remap the entire animation by just working with that one nested composition. If you have many instances of the same nested composition throughout your animation and you only want to change the timing of this one instance, then that's a great way to do it. Now, some clients, and uh, just in case they're watching, uh, none of mine of course, have a tendency to change little things like timing at the last minute. This is a great way to handle last minute timing fixes when your deadlines are really tight. Finally, in case you haven't noticed, nesting and pre-composing help keep clutter to a minimum, always a good thing in a larger project. Some of you out there have a tendency to let things get a little bit messy. You know who you are, don't make me start naming names. Pre-composing is a great way to keep that to a minimum. Now off the top of my head, I can think of only one major disadvantage of nesting and pre-composing. When you pre-compose a layer, you no longer have direct access to a layer or its effects and keyframes. That doesn't mean you can't get to them. I've already shown you that you just have to right click and choose open composition. I just mean that you can't work with them in your main composition, which can be a little bit of a pain sometimes. Some things to look out for when working with pre-compositions are that by default, blending modes don't work properly. So for example, let's say you've got several layers in your pre-composition that are all using the add transfer mode. When you nest them in your main composition, they will not use the add transfer mode on layers below the comp. In other words, they're not interacting correctly. You can, however, tell After Effects to do this by activating the nested pre-comps collapse transformation button here in the timeline. As you can see, the layers are now interacting properly. You'll also notice that once you've activated the Collapse Transformation button, both the Quality switch and the Motion Blur switch are no longer available. And that's because when you activate a Collapse Transformation switch, you're basically telling After Effects to use whatever properties are set at the source of the layer. Meaning that settings you have for a layer in the original pre-composition are the settings After Effects will use. So for example, if Motion Blur is turned on for any or all the layers in the pre-comp, it will be used here in this main composition. Another advantage of Collapse Transformations is that when you have 3D layers in your pre-comp, if you activate Collapse Transformations in the main composition, they will retain their 3D attributes, more or less. Finally, Another great advantage of nesting compositions is that you can work at different frame rates and preserve those frame rates even when you nest in a composition with a different frame rate. You see, normally, when you have a comp with one frame rate, for example, 10 frames per second, and then you drop that into a 30 frames per second composition, the nested comp will behave as if it were animated at 30 frames per second. But if you wanted to keep it at that choppy 10 frames per second look, you can go into the composition settings by choosing Composition, Composition Settings, and then in the dialog, choose the Advanced tab and activate the option called Preserve Frame Rate when nested or in render queue. 
Once you choose this, your pre-comp's frame rate will be preserved no matter what frame rate your main comp is using. By doing this, we have two very different frame rates being used at the same time. So there you have it, nesting and pre-composing. Now you know. If you want to see them in action, check out my tutorials on displacement maps, lip syncing, and After Effects Z-Space. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.